sockeye salmon, otherwise known as Oncorhynchus nerica, are most identifiable by the spawning males. These salmon have a red body with a green colored tail and head with a hooked mouth. They can grow to be two to three feet long and their average weight can be between five to 15 pounds, though some of them may grow to be even larger than that. Sockeye are most commonly found in the Northern Pacific Ocean, along the coast of the Western United States and British Columbia, all the way to the east coasts of Russia and China. Salmon runs will push marine-derived nutrients, or MDMs, from oceans to the headwaters of rivers with low productivity, and runs of sockeye through streams and rivers have been observed to enhance algae production in lakes. The predation of sockeye by brown bears have also been found to bring MDMs from aquatic to riparian environments, modifying the nutrient cycling of soils in those environments. The deposition of such MDMs from predation and from salmon runs has enhanced the growth of Sitka spruces along stream beds. The growth helps to stabilize the soil along those beds, preventing erosion. The state laws and regulations for salmon fishing require that you have a license to fish and harvest only a couple of salmon a day. However, the same rules do not apply to commercial fisheries, and the Washington State Department of Fish and Wildlife fails to clearly state the fishing rights of an individual indigenous people in their annual fishing rules manual. This makes the sustainable harvest of salmon more difficult because it doesn't adequately address the needs of indigenous fishers, and it allows many opportunities for rule breakers to overharvest. One sustainable harvesting method of salmon is through the traditional technique of reef net fishing. This is done with a couple of boats and a large net. According to Lemmy Wild, using only the flood tide, salmon follow along an artificial reef and swim over a small net suspended between two stationary platforms. When spotters standing on 20 foot towers see a school of salmon swim over the net, it's then raised and the live fish are rolled over the side of the platform at the waterline so that no harm is done to the fish, and into a netted live well open to the flowing seawater. There they are allowed to rest and release any lactic acid that may have built up in their flesh. Sockeye are also among the most nutrient-dense salmon that you can eat, having large amounts of vitamin B12, vitamin A, protein, and potassium. 28 grams of sockeye salmon, which is out of the average 200 gram filet, equates to about 550 kilojoules, or 130 calories of energy, making it a super nutrient and calorie dense meal. For indigenous groups in the Northwest, salmon was often more than just a food source. Salmon was like a way of life. According to James Curtis of the Hoset, we do more with it than just eat it. We prepare it for long term, down the road. Some people fish salmon for sport or luxury. We do it as a way of life. It's something that my parents did and probably our kids will do. Salmon was also traditionally used as a fertilizer. The bones and carcass of a salmon was buried beneath the berry bushes, or could be given back to the waters it came from to feed more aquatic life. The many uses of salmon have only grown. Salmon is not only consumed for food, but they're also used in medicine for their high amounts of omega-3, which is often sold as an oil that promotes skin health. Technology surrounding salmon has also improved with the first GMO salmon being approved for commercial sale in 2016, despite its controversies. While we love our precious sockeye salmon, the future of the sockeye is a mystery. There are many ecological problems that put our salmon populations at risk, like habitat loss, overharvesting, climate change, and pollutants in the salmon bodies, such as PCBs. However, there are also many solutions being worked on to bolster our salmon stock, like the sustainable reef net fishing, including some controversial solutions like fish farms and GMOs. Hey guys, this is Cam, and I am really excited to share with you the sockeye salmon that I will be doing for my Wild Chef film project. I have had the opportunity to learn a lot more about sockeye salmon than I ever did in the past. It means a lot to me, my family, and a lot of different families around the Pacific Northwest. So I'm really excited to get to share with you what I've learned and what me and my family normally do with sockeye salmon. I hope you guys can take this knowledge and expand on it even more. So the salmon that I got for my project is from Sea to Shore. You can get it at the Sea to Shore food stand at the Bellingham Farmer's Market. This large 
sort of large filet was only $11, which is a really good price for salmon, especially local salmon. So that's obviously going to be the first ingredient that you need. You'll also need some dill. This is baby dill that I just found at the store. I have two of them because I like dill. Um, you also might need mayonnaise if you want to dip. Then you're going to need some butter and lemon. And then, of course, your regular kitchen tools. So let's get started. All right. So to start, you're obviously going to want to lay your salmon filet out on your uh, cooking device. I chose to fry mine, or bake mine, that is, in the oven. You could also do it in the air fryer, but this is a larger piece, larger than my air fryer, so that's what we're going to do. I'm going to put this one in the oven. Once you have that ready, we're going to start chopping your dill. You're going to chop it finely, and I will come back to you once that is done. So I have went ahead and chopped up the dill finely. Um, this is about one of these little cases, and I'm going to add this to some melted butter, which I've done beforehand. And you're going to mix that, and if you want to have a sauce to go with your salmon, you're going to chop up another thing of dill, and you're going to mix that with about another, you know, however big th this thing is, um, with some mayonnaise and dill. And then you'll have a dip. All right, once you've got your butter melted and your dill mixed in, finely chopped, and you have your salmon placed on your baking sheet, forgot what it was called, um, you're now going to take some type of brushing device. I have like this kitchen paint brush, and you're going to go ahead and brush some of that salmon and dill onto your salmon. Uh, if you don't have something like this, you could just dump it on and kind of hope it stays. You could also just create like a little basin out of some tin foil where it sticks around, but I have a brush, so that's what I'm going to do. And while I am doing that, I might as well tell you one of the stories from the Haida about the raven and the salmon, and why salmon run up river. So according to the legend of the, from the Haida, there was a daughter of the chief of the Haida who saw this big, beautiful, magnificent fish in her dreams. It was so, it, they had never seen it before. It was incredible. And she woke up and she just desired that fish. She wanted to have that fish to share with all of her people. And she cried for many days, just super sad that she could not get a hold of this fish. So her father, the chief, gathered some councilmen and tried to identify what this fish was, but nobody could. So one of the medicine men who was in the council decided that he would go to his friend the raven, because the raven would likely know what this fish was. So he brought the raven to the council, and the raven told him the fish that you speak of, it, this big, beautiful, magnificent fish is called a salmon, and I will go retrieve one for you. So the raven flew upstream, to where the salmon people were and captured one of the salmon to bring back to the Haida. However, the salmon that he captured was the salmon son of the chief of the salmon people. Obviously, the salmon people weren't happy, so they followed him. They followed him as he went upriver back towards the Haida. When the salmon arrived, he gave, it, gave the fish to the daughter of the chief, and she was overjoyed. She was super happy to have that salmon, and she shared it with all of the village. However, the raven warned the medicine man that the salmon people would be coming to go pick up the salmon son that he had stolen, and that they should prepare. So what they did was the village got together, and they threw nets across the river. And as the salmon went up the river, they were all caught in their nets. And that would be the Haida story of how, why salmon go up river and where the salmon came from. There are a lot of different salmon origin stories from a lot of different places. We heard one of them in Earth's Blanket from the Sandwich people. And I'm sure there's many more, not only in the Pacific Northwest here in Washington, but, you know, wherever you can find salmon. All right, I am trying to stall for time so I can brush a little bit more of this on here. I'm going to dump the rest and hope it stays. 
I mean, it's not that big of a deal. Because I like butter and I also like dill. Okay. Now that that's done, I am going to put that in the oven at 400 degrees for about 20 minutes. And I'll go back once that 20 minutes is up. And I will check to see if it's done. All right. All right. Once your salmon is done cooking at 400 degrees for about 20 minutes, it should be done. So this is what it looks like Ooh, without letting it fall. Um, it seems perfectly cooked, which is great. And if you made that dish, you know, that sauce to go with it, just the mayonnaise and dill with it, that'll also be great. Now for the last thing I'm going to do to finish off my salmon meal is I'm just going to squeeze a little bit of lemon juice on it. Really, not much. I'm not going to use the whole thing because this is only half a filet. Alright, and that's about it. Thank you. And I hope if you intend to make this salmon dish that you improve upon it even. Because there's definitely ways to do that. This is just what we've, we being my family, has done for years. So, thanks guys. And I am going to enjoy my midday dinner. Alright. Bye.